Hello, my name is Eric. Welcome to another episode of From Prison to the Streets. I talk about prison experiences, what it's like, why you shouldn't go there, what you need to do when you get out to make things right. In this video, I am going to be talking about the hardest thing about prison for me, and that was losing my father while I was in prison. So be sure to like and subscribe. It tells YouTube this is relevant content, and subscribe if you want more videos. So let me explain a few things before I get right into the video. I haven't posted any any content, no videos for uh, a few weeks. The reason why is a few weeks ago the anniversary of my father's death came up. So I am going to mess up the chronological order of what we have done so far. In my last video I was talking about how I was in county jail and I thought something bad happened to my father. And they were looking at sending me to a mental hospital. However, on that occasion I did not end up losing my father, thankfully. I lost my father about two years after that, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And I feel it's important that I need to talk about this because his anniversary was just here, the anniversary of his death was just here, and it's a, it's a rough time of year for me, and so this is fresh in my mind, and I want to talk about it. <clears throat> So, my dad and I were very good friends. We had our ups and downs, we, you know, we had a lot of times when we didn't get along at all, but we were best friends. It's kind of the way my family works. We all fight from time to time, but we all love each other. It sounds weird, but it's how it works. Now, after I went to prison, my father and I kind of patched up our, our relationship. We were a lot closer than we were before and we were doing really well. My father passed away in July of 2009, and <clears throat> I had just seen him a couple weeks before. He had been at the graduation ceremony for my high school graduation that we had at the prison. We actually had a graduating high school class. I, I completed the program and technically graduated in 2008, but we didn't have our ceremony until 2009. For the ceremony, my mother and my father came up, and we had a good time. We took pictures together. We had some food together. It was a good time. A couple weeks later, my father was having some health problems. He had some sort of abscess on his stomach or something. He had to go to the hospital. He got out of the hospital, and I talked to him on the phone. I called him, and he said he was doing all right. This would have been on a Friday when I talked to him. He said that he was going to come up the next day and see me. And so the next day would have been Saturday, Saturday visitation. Basically how it works when your folks come up to visit you. They check in up front and go sit out in visitation and, and they'll call you out there. Well... If you know there's a visit, you're kind of waiting for them to call your name over the intercom. So you're already dressed, you're already showered, you're already ready to go. And that's how I was. I was up first thing in the morning, took my shower, got shaved, got my nice prison clothes on and threw on my, my cologne and stuff. I was ready to go. Ready to go see my dad. My dad and my mom. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and a couple hours went by, and nothing. So, I went and got on the phone and called my mom's cell phone, because I couldn't get a hold of anybody. Actually, I called my dad's cell phone first, didn't get anybody, so then I called my mom's cell phone. I was starting to get worried, you know, I thought maybe they had car trouble, or heaven forbid they got in an accident on the way to see me. So I talked to my mom, and she said, well, your dad had to go back to the hospital last night. You know, he was feeling real 
bloated and it just wasn't feeling good so they took him back to the hospital and I found out later that as they were loading him into the ambulance he kept telling the paramedics that they needed to hurry up and get him fixed get him fixed up because he needed to be at the prison the next day to visit his son so he was thinking about me as he was being wheeled away in an ambulance <clears throat> so anyway throughout that week I didn't know what happened what had really happened was my father was bleeding internally and he was in the hospital making several turns for the worse and what I was aware of was that my father was in the hospital and he didn't feel good. That was it. <clears throat> I had no idea that my father was dying. He was unconscious, his heart had stopped for a long time, he didn't have any blood or oxygen to his brain, and he was on life support. It was really bad. <clears throat> my sisters were with him and my mom was up there at the hospital and I knew nothing I didn't know anything about what was going on and that's what's so hard for me about it because he was my best friend and I didn't know anything about it I wasn't there for him everybody else was there for him you know, my sisters were there with him, holding his hand, singing hymns to him. I was oblivious. I had a bad feeling all week. But I wasn't there for my best friend when he needed me. That's what's hard for me. And this video is really hard to make. This is my, I don't know, third or fourth attempt at this video. Because this is really hard for me to talk about. So, bear with me. <clears throat> now... All that week I had a bad feeling, and on Thursday, my father passed away. And it was my day, I had morning yard, so from 8.30 to 10 in the morning I was out on the yard, and on Thursdays I was in the band room. And that's what I was doing that day, I was in the band room jamming out. I was really wanting my dad to get to feeling better because I was really excited to tell him about a few things. I got a really good job working as an electrician and I felt that would be something that would make him really happy because his dad was an electrician and I wanted to show him that I was turning my life around. You know, I always had this big regret that my dad had to watch me mess up so many times. I just wanted him to see that I was doing good, you know, and I don't know, I felt like if I could show him that I was changing my my life up and, and show him that I was doing good, I felt that would somehow make him feel good. I don't know. So I was in the band room playing the bass, and like I usually did, at around, I don't know, 9, 9.30, I think somewhere around there. It would have been close to the end of my yard period. I got off the phone and or I got out of the band room and I went and make made a phone call. Um, I wanted to talk to my mom, see what was going on, see how my dad was doing because at this point I didn't know that he was dead. I didn't know that he was dying. I just knew that he didn't feel good. And I called and I talked to my mom, she answered the phone and her voice sounded really shaky, she was really upset. I could hear my sister crying in the background and I knew that something was up. But my mom didn't tell me anything. She just said, you know, your dad's still not doing good. But I'm going to come up and see you this weekend. So, that was that. It was a short conversation. Got off the phone and went and 
went back to the cell and I kind of knew what was up, you know. I didn't want to acknowledge it. Like, I didn't want to form that thought in my head that my best friend was gone, but I kind of felt that something really bad had happened to my father. And I felt that way for, you know, a couple days until Saturday. Saturday rolled around, they brought me to visitation, everybody was looking at me, like, oh man, sucks to be you. Now, before I went to visitation, actually Thursday night, the chaplain started to call me to his office. Well, he did talk, call me to the office. It's something nobody ever wants, to be called to the chaplain's office, because that usually means that somebody died, and the chaplain didn't like me very much. I didn't like him. But he called me up there. When I saw him, he kind of just turned white. He's like, "Oh no, no, I uh, I didn't call you. I don't need you here. I don't I don't know why they sent you." What was really going on? I had been in a mental hospital at this point. I was very unruly when I was in county jail. And, I don't know, I had a real thick mental health file, so people thought that I was kind of crazy. They thought that I was going to flip out if they told me what happened. No one wanted to tell me what happened. So, Saturday when I went up to visitation, I was getting these looks from people like, you know, I hate to be you. And when I went in there, they had me go to a room that was separate from the main visitation area. It was off to the side. It was, I think it was an old conference room or maybe a, a closet of some sort, like a supply room or storage room or something, I don't know. But they had me go in there and they had a bunch of black suits standing outside the room and they had the captain there. The reason why they all thought that I was going to flip out, they all thought that I was going to lose it and they wanted to have the black suit there to restrain me in case I did lose it. And the only thing in that room when I walked in, there's two chairs. No table, nothing, just two chairs. My mom was sitting in one of them. The other one was empty. And I sat down. And she told me what happened. And I, uh, I cried like a baby. And that was it, you know. Oddly enough, I told her that it would be okay. We went out and we ate some food, we cried together. Laughed together and cried some more. And then I went back to my cell and I cried some more. And the way I dealt with that, that whole thing being locked up, while well, while my dad passed away and I couldn't go to the funeral couldn't be there with him when when he passed away like I knew my sisters were there singing hymns to him when he died and I couldn't be there because I was stuck in a prison didn't make me feel very good at all uh, yeah so how I dealt with it I tried not to think about it I threw myself into my work and my college work and that's it and music and working out that's all I did I did not want one second of free time to think about my father or the fact that he was gone that was really rough for me still is like I've tried to make this video several times while I'm making this video, I'm trying really hard to rush through it and not think about what I'm saying. Because this is really hard for me to talk about. If you want to know why crime doesn't pay, if you want to know why being a criminal ain't, ain't the thing to do, isn't cool, if you want to know what the worst thing I ever experienced in prison was, it's so losing my best friend and not being there for him. Losing my father and not being there for him or my family when they needed me. 
So that's that. I gotta end this here because this is really rough for me to talk about. This is another episode of From Prison to the Streets. I'm Eric. I will see you later. Take it easy. I'm out of here. Right. Right, they change. They change.